Yes, he start. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the University of Riga for inviting me to talk to you all on this particular day, which was declared the Yoga Day by the United Nations last year. And uh, as we all watch, yoga is spreading all over the planet today. And uh, I have been going to India for the past 45 years. And as a Westerner, uh, I try to stay as close as possible to the traditional points of view. And today there is a big question regarding this world spreading yoga, which is, uh, what are we doing with this? Are we killing the yoga values and yoga traditions? Or are we changing it so that it becomes possible to be understood by the rest of the world? And it is a real question, because uh, looking at what is happening all over the world, it is large spreading. The answer is not so sure. So, if we talk first about uh, the meaning of all these traditions, uh, we have to be as clear as possible. And I just wonder if it is a good idea to stay with approximative definitions when we are using foreign language like Sanskrit. As you know, yoga is a word from Sanskrit language, which is a foreign language for many of us. So if we had to look for a definition this word means, in our languages, at least in English, it means a state of unity or a state of union. About uh, 2,000 years ago, one of the very well-known uh, yogi explained or gave a definition this word by saying that the state of unity can be perceived when the psychological mind has become silent or quiet. Now what do we mean when we're talking about psychological mind? We mean these tendencies that today are becoming so powerful like uh, always evaluating things, people, situations, ideas. Another pattern is to compare. We are always comparing. Here again, people, situations, things. Another pattern is judging. You know, we, are, we always think that something is good or bad and when something is good we think that it could be very very good or very good or little good or very very bad and this this tendency of judging and another side of psychological mind is the idea of becoming we want to become different we want to become something better we want the world to become whatever, but the idea of becoming, which of course involves time. And uh, today we all know that time is an invention of the thought, that we are the only beings on this planet which have given so much importance to time. 
minerals, animals, plants do not live with time. They are just living. Because time has become a big, big problem. We are afraid of becoming older, we are afraid of decaying, we are afraid of death. And all these processes are very, very natural. We will not change them. Never. So all this is building up what is called the psychological mind. And on the other side we, ha we have what we could call the practical mind. That would be uh, to look in such a way that we can give clear responses to practical questions. Because our life are many practical questions. And what we do most of the time with practical questions, we transform them into psychological problems. Another side of the practical mind is never postponing. That is when there is something to solve, to solve it immediately. Not thinking that tomorrow we'll be more able to solve any kind of question. This is very practical. Now, when this definition of perceiving unity is only possible when the psychological mind is silent. We could first ask why why is it that this mind is divided in two parts? And it has to do with the way we behave in life. That is uh, how do we relate ourselves to the world? We do not very well see, we don't see clearly that the world is not a part. We, we are the world, we hold the rest of everything, but we are not here for conquering the world. We are the world, this is just very obvious. And then another thing is why do we have this mind divided in two is the perception. We perceive a big difference most of the time in between what we call ourselves and the outside. We're not very aware that the, the whole movement of the outside is building us up. We are the movement of life itself. And by forgetting this very natural movement of life, our perception becomes totally diverted. And another point, because of we have this division is the idea of time. We perceive this movement of life as having a kind of past, present and future. We rarely realize that uh, what we call the present is the past of our future and is also the future of our past. And this quality of being present uh, has nothing to do with the idea of time, the quality of presence. So these are three of the main reasons why the mind is divided into parts of behavior, perception and the idea of time. Now, what about this, what we call the state of unity? What we today call yoga is also something very practical, what people call practice. And uh, 
it is mainly made for discovering again rediscovering that it is possible to perceive reality as it is not putting ideas not putting ideals uh, not bringing imagination but to face reality as it is the second side of this practice is realizing our responsibility for life as a whole life is not divided and we are life we are not separate from life trying to control it this is very childish and it's totally impossible anyway it's just an imagination so this responsibility for life as a whole today we are facing this huge problem of pollution on the world scale and uh, we really have to take care of life as a whole another side another point is releasing the tensions which are stopping having insights insights means a very clear vision of reality because we have accumulated so many tensions since millennia it is not the individual it's the human mind we have accumulated so many tensions that it has become so difficult to see clearly to have deep insights which of course would be a perfect way for giving right responses to any kind of problem another point regarding this practice is to to get rid of the psychological memory that is to get rid of the past we have accumulated so many memories we once again we're talking about psychological not practical practical memory is, is very very useful But psychological memory once again is stopping insights stopping clear vision and the last point is to realize our freedom from the idea of time we are not slaves of time time is an invention of the thought so to be to be free from this idea that we are reduced in time we have no time we have to hurry there's nothing to hurry about nature doesn't hurry and we are nature also so this is what it is when we are talking when we are using this word yoga yoga and uh, since centuries a big 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 work has been done trying to what I call training yogis that is trying to, to point that it is possible to live a complete life and not divided and somebody who lives a complete life this is what we call a yogi it has nothing to do with becoming a yoga teacher which is a profession but the profession of yoga teacher should be to train people to be yogis which doesn't mean to to stop anything in their life it means to to live a very deep and complete life in every domain so this is what yoga is about we have reduced it to physical exercises which are good there's nothing wrong with physical exercises but this reduction is very dangerous because all this deep knowledge could be forgotten if we reduce this, this huge understanding of 
life as only body exercises. Body exercises are just a part of it. That we have to learn the whole of it. That is to learn our whole life. So this is what what we will talk, not only talk but try to realize when we when we meet again. Uh, the university has kindly invited me to come for uh, a few sessions in Riga in the coming month, and uh, we'll go into this, of course, through practice and through the clarity of mind. So if I may ask, if I may wish something is just try to to ponder about all that has been said so that when we meet we can immediately go together as deep as possible into those topics and and uh, using practice will be much more efficient if we are clear minded when we meet. So let's meet again. And uh, I wish you a happy life and clarity of mind and hoping we will meet in for real next time. Thank you.